in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 15, starting in verse 16. And as we walk through the... Uh, I pray that as you walk with the Lord as he heads to Calvary, you, you get to, to appreciate your salvation just a little more. Knowing what it cost him. What he went through. Maybe you've been betrayed. He knows what that feels like. Does he know what pain is? Yes, he's experiencing excruciating physical pain. Not only that, do, 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 he's, he's encountering a, a spiritual pain that, praise God, we'll never have to experience. Because at one time he will be separated from the Father for three hours. How that all works, I don't know exactly how that works out, but it does. It says that three hours of darkness. And, and so he's going to be crucified, which we haven't got there yet, but we're getting close. And crucifixion was a, 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 a terrible way to go. It was used by the Persians and the Greeks and the Romans from the 4th century B.C. until the death of Jesus. And so that's not unique. Thousands of people had been crucified. But the part was that he was going to have the sin of the world placed upon his shoulders as he paid the price for our sins. A spiritual debt that you and I don't have to pay as believers, right? Isn't that great? Sin paid for in full. Past, present, future. Whew. That's a lot of sin. I don't know about you, but I sin at least one time a day. <laughs> one time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, uh, and he, he paid for every one of those. And as we watch him go through this horrendous treatment where he's beaten, he's spit on, and everything, those were your and mine beatings. And those were your and mine mocking. He was the sinless son of God. And even as we looked at Pilate said, I find no fault in this man. But God's plan was being worked out, right? God had a plan, and he still has a plan. He's still working that out. And uh, so, uh, and as we went through um, the previous chapter, a couple chapters here in Mark, we saw there was three phases of the Jewish trial. First an Annas, then Caiaphas, and then the whole Sanhedrin, 70 men. And they pronounced him to die because he was saying he was the son of God. He was the Messiah. And they got him for blasphemy. Well, they take him and they can't kill him. That, that was their whole goal. They did an illegal trial and everything. So they took him to Pilate. And Pilate listens and he looks at him and he says, I don't find anything wrong with this guy. So he takes him to Herod when he finds out he's from Gal Galilee. Well, Herod uh, always wanted to see him, but Jesus won't jump through the hoops and play the games that he wants him to. So he has him beaten and mocked. And then he sends him back to Pilate. And Pilate there says, man, I have a way I'll get out from underneath this. Because remember, Pilate gets a, a, a visit from someone that says his wife had a dream the night before and said, don't you do anything to this man. But the crowd wouldn't have it that way. The, the Pharisees and the scribes were out there working up the crowd. And he says, well, I have, I have a way out. I'm going to give you Barabbas, who was a revolutionary, a terrorist, who he was to the Roman government. Or you can have Jesus. Because he knew just a few days before this on Monday, he came right, or on Sunday, he came riding in. <laughs> and they were all throwing down their cloaks and saying, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they thought, he's sure they'll let Jesus go. And they'll take Barabbas to have him killed. Many people believe that the cross that was made for Barabbas. Remember Jesus will be hung beside two thieves. The one was made for Barabbas. And the middle was made for Barabbas. But guess who's going to go on there? Jesus is. And so you, you see these things happening. And they say crucify him, crucify him. And that's where we're kind of where we left off there. In chapter 15 and verse 15. So Pilate wanting to gratify the crowd. Release Barabbas to them 
and he delivered Jesus after he had scourged him to be crucified. And remember, we talked about what that scourging meant and how it, how physically devastated people. And many people died from the scourging before they even got to the cross. Mark's going to focus next on the, the, the scoffers who, who deride Jesus as he was taken from the judgment hall to the cross. And we'll see the soldiers mocking him. We'll see the scribes and them mocking him and the crowds mocking him. But he enduring the punishment in obedience to his father's will. Remember, as he prayed in the garden, not my will, but your will be done. And what I want you to also pick up, God may call you to go through some suffering. It's not always easy in life. <laughs> Jesus understands that. Remember, it tells us in Hebrews, he's a sympathetic high priest. He understands life is not always easy. He also understands that we sometimes fail. And he's there to pick us up. And I, I, that, that's the picture that I want you to see as we continue our journey. We see the soldiers ridiculing him. And, and I'm going to give you an abbreviated form of this so that we can get through it today. Uh, then this, in verse 16, then the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium. That was the governor's place. That was Pilate's place. And they called together the whole garrison. That's about 600 men. So Jesus is going to be paraded around by 600 men, and, and you're going to see what's happening here. And they clothed him with purple. Uh, purple was the color of what? Royalty. And clothed in purple, they probably took an old Roman robe that had faded, and they put this, a scarlet originally, but faded to a purple haze, and they put it on his back. Remember what had happened to him already? He had been scourged with that cat of nine tails with bones and stuff and ripped that flesh off his back and they put the crown on his head and, and those things. And they're going to do it again. And, and so they put that on his back and that tells us in Matthew they gave him a staff, a stick. So and then they would, he's, he, the label on him is what? King of the Jews. And they're making fun of him and they're ridiculing him. And as I shared last time, one time, one day. He'll come back and every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, right? And, and so they may think they got away with it one time, but they sure won't the second time. And uh, it says here, they twisted a crown of thorns and put it on his head. That crown I've seen could have thorns up to maybe one inch long. And they put it on his head and they start hitting on his head with a staff or a stick is what that word could be translated and put it on his head and began to salute him hail king of the Jews that's not what the Jews wanted they wanted him killed for what blasphemy that he claimed to be God but Pilate said no we're gonna do it for something that is punishable by death king of the what Jews and uh, so then they struck him on the head with the reed and Bad on him and bowing the knee, they worshiped him. And in many translations said they mocked him. They mocked worship him. They were pretending that he's king. They're making fun of him. They're bowing their knee and they said, what kind of king is this? Because remember Rome, you had to say there's only one king. <laughs> there's only one Caesar. And when they had mocked him, verse 20, they took the purple off him, put his own clothes on him, and led him out to crucify him. Verses 21 through 25. And they will lead him out of town because that's the way it had to happen according to Old Testament law. It's funny, as we've seen before, how... How the sticklers were the scribes and the Pharisees. They wouldn't even go into the praetorium because they didn't want to become unclean so they could partake in the Passover meal. And remember, Jesus will be portrayed as our Passover lamb. And so it's taken according to that feast. And uh, 
and 21 through 25, we see the Savior's punishment. Then they compelled a certain man, Simon a Cyrenian, the father of Alexander and Rufus, as he was coming out of the country and passing by to bear his cross. He was so weak, he, they would put the cross beam on their back. The other part of the cross was laying on the ground. I know you see pictures different to that, and there's varying arguments about that, but he's got that on his back, but he's too weak. He's been through too much, his physical body. And then when they put that on, if you would check, and, and, and you'll see a lot of references. I don't usually have that many on your outline. I usually have more points, less references. Because to get the full picture of what happened, you've got to go through all four Gospels. And so sometime be a good Berean, go home, and check out the rest of those scriptures so you get the full story. Because Jesus, as they do that, he kneels down and he tells the women, blessed are you who don't have any children. And he gives a little speech there. And uh, that's in Luke. And, and, and so they put it on his back. He can't carry it. So here comes a guy from, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, Simon, a Cyrenian. And that's from Africa. And uh, they believe it was a group of Jewish folks that lived in Africa. And that he came for the Passover meal, the Passover time. And he is the father of Alexander and Rufus. Well, we find out later that Alexander and Rufus are a great part of the church. And many folks believe this man who carried Jesus' cross, gets what? He gets saved. And his children are part of the church in Romans chapter 13, I believe it is. 16, 13, actually. And so, uh, even out of this, and we know, actually... And then even one of the thieves, which at the end of this chapter, you're going to see they're both deriding him. They're making fun of him. Even one of them will get saved. Only God can do that, folks. During the hardest times and the darkest times, God works miracles and people get saved and lives are changed. And and they brought him to the place Golgotha, which is translated place of a skull. I was in Israel and I saw this place. It's a hill. And, and I know it says in our songs that he was on a hill far away. But Jesus probably didn't die on a hill. They put people up on main connections of the highway. So that people walking by would see. And they would say, don't you mess with Rome. Because that's what happens to you. And... Uh, and, and But the, the place of a skull is there, and you could see it. Some people have went in there and messed up some of it, but you could see the figure of a skull. It's not far from the garden tomb. If you ever get a chance to go there, it's a fantastic place. And, uh, and so they take him there, and they will put him on that cross. Then they gave him wine mingled with myrrh to drink. And myrrh was used as a as a drug like so he it tells us in another one that he did not take it here but said he took a drink but then he wouldn't drink it and when they crucified him they divided his garments casting lots for them to determine what every man should take and Psalm 22 18 tells us ahead of time that they would cast for his garments he's fulfilling prophecy as he walks and heads to Calvary And when they had crucified him, they divided his garment, casting lots for them to determine what every man should take. Now it was the third hour, and they crucified him. This is about 9 a.m. in the morning. About 9 a.m. in the morning. Remember, this trial and all those things happened all night long. Until about 6 in the morning, when their day starts, their day goes from dark to dark. But at 6 o'clock in the morning, when they had the meeting with the Sanhedrin because they're supposed to do the trial in the daytime. And they pronounce him and he goes to this and the third hour he's going to Calvary. And the description of his accusation was written above the king of Jews. It was written in three languages. Three languages. And uh, I'm going to get my spot here. Like I said, I'm giving you kind of an abbreviated thing here so that we can get through that. Oh, I did want to mention, Mark notes that he was the third hour at 9 a.m., the Jewish method of reckoning the hours of the day. 
And then John says it was at 6 a.m. People say, well, how come there's a difference? One's used in Roman time and one's used in Jewish time. So that's why the difference there. And remember, the Jewish calendar was different than ours. The Jewish calendar, all the months are 30 days. And ours is kind of kind of different from that. So uh, John 19, 14 says that. Just the night before, Jesus had been celebrating the Passover meal with the disciples in the upper room. And now he's heading for Calvary. So this all happened overnight, folks. A lot of things happened overnight. Jesus went to the garden. He was betrayed there, taken to Annas, then to Caiaphas, then back uh, with Caiaphas and the Sanhedrin. And in between that, he went to Pilate. Then he went to Herod and then back. He's been beaten. He's been, he has to be exhausted, totally exhausted. Remember when he's in the garden, he was praying so hard. The drops of blood came from his forehead. And this, this physical body <laughs> that he took on, and we know he was all God and all man, but he was still physical body, had been really dealt with, and so he couldn't even carry his own cross. And then we see people continue with the ridicule and with making fun of him. And You know what? Uh, I just wonder how many of us would stand up and say to people that might do this to us and say, I'm a Christian and I want to tell you about Jesus. Even though the, uh, the voice of the martyrs, <laughs> people are getting martyred every day by the hundreds standing up and claiming to be Christians. Jesus stood up. He knew when to talk and when not to talk. That's always an amazing thing. And he did that. And remember, he's doing these things in the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit. You have the same strength and power available to you. And uh, so, because, folks, I think it's going to get worse here. I think we're going to face some things that we just think other countries face. But it's starting to happen. I think it's a prelude to the rapture. <laughs> uh, I think it's going to get bad and ugly and we're going to get out of here and we're going to be caught up together with him in the air and then all hell is going to break loose here on earth as Satan God's wrath poured out Satan there for those seven years and uh, we'll, we'll be with the Lord and then we'll come back to him with him for the millennial kingdom but and the inscription he, he is king of the Jews he is king of king and lord of lords you can read that in Revelation with him, they also crucified two robbers, one on his right and the other on his left. And I love that story of the two thieves. Now, I believe, and most folks that study the Bible believe, these thieves isn't the first time they've seen Jesus. They've heard him talk. They've seen the way he dies. Even the way he dies is a testimony. Even one of the guards that after he stabs him says, he truly must be the son of God. It's just the way he, everything that was around him, they were crucified, one on his right, one on his left. And again, Barabbas should have been on the one in the middle. You know who else should have been there? Me. I should have been there. You should have been there. Maybe you should have been on both sides. I don't know which side you want to be on. I don't want to be in on any of the three. But truthfully, Without Christ, I'm the one going to the cross because I'm the lawbreaker. I'm the sinner. And, uh, and, and so you just appreciate all the more what he did and the love he demonstrated at Calvary. And, uh, and so the scripture was fulfilled, which says, and he was numbered with the transgressors, written over 700 years before in Isaiah 53, 12. And those who passed by blasphemed him. They mocked him. They were wagging their heads. That was a, a mode of derision. They were making fun of him. And they start saying these things. Aha, you who destroyed the temple. Where'd they get that? He never said that, right? He never said destroy the temple. He just said destroy this temple. And I will raise it again in three days. But they had heard that stuff because that's what the Sanhedrin those 70 men that got out there and spread all these rumors. Because guess what? All these people weren't at that trial. All these people were not there. Remember, they tried to get people to, to bring up stories to get him put away, but they couldn't get anybody to agree. All these stories were made up. One guy said, hey, I heard him say that 
destroy the temple and I'll raise it back up in three days. He was talking about the temple of his body, as it explains to us in John. And so uh, they've caught on to this thing. It's not a whole lot different than the mass media mobs today. They catch on to a phrase and they work themselves up in a frenzy. And who knows the things. We, you saw what those riots and what those things done. They had a, had a, a, a riot again in Atlanta last night. And uh, uh, police cars were destroyed and people were arrested. And, and they had a mass shooting in California last night. Ten people dead, ten people injured. The enemy's out there. Things are ugly. But people get caught up. Because people get caught up and work themselves up in such a frenzy over something that happened. So, uh, the police officers killed a man there in Atlanta. He was uh, not a good guy. But they get worked up and they worked us up, up in a frenzy and they picked Barabbas over and, and that's what's happening today. They're picking out things because they're worked up in these feelings and you ask some of those folks, well what are you here for? They don't know. They don't know. They're just here because everybody else is here and they can work. I mean, that's what's happened. These people are here. They believe the lies. None of them heard him say it, but they believe like you who destroy the temple and build it in three days. Save yourself and come down from the cross. Whew, I'm glad he didn't. I'm thinking, man, this is a good way to get out of this deal. <laughs> I've had enough. <laughs> but he's there for the whole thing. He's there for the whole plan. Save yourself and come down from the cross. So the people are, are mocking him. They're making fun of him. Same people that not too long ago were praising him. Now they're mocking him. Likewise, the chief priest also mocking among themselves with the scribes said, He saves others. Himself he cannot save. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, Descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. Even those who were crucified with him reviled him. So the two men are making fun of him. The priest, the scribes, everyone's making fun of him. And they said, if you come down from the cross, we'll believe. You know what? That's a lie. Even after his death and after his resurrection... Guess what? These men didn't believe. They didn't believe. Folks are still claiming today, if I just see a miracle, I'll believe. No, it's the word of God. Conviction of the Holy Spirit and the word of God that brings people to Christ. Amen. They don't believe because of miracles. They don't believe because of those things. Matter of fact, many folks follow Jesus and they left when he, he gave them anything difficult. He said, you got to eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. So, ugh. They left. They don't understand what you're saying. You've got to believe in what I'm going to do for you at Calvary. I'm going to go to cross. I'm going to die for you there. And my blood will be shed that your sins will be paid for. No different than the Passover lamb, right? The Passover lamb was offered to pay for the sins of the people. And actually, that only covered it over. That's an atonement. Jesus did more than an atonement. He paid the debt in full. And so we, we see him heading to Calvary. And... and uh, we're, we're going to stop there because for our time today uh, with this with just a couple thoughts and, and a couple verses. Second Corinthians 514, you say, well, why, Pastor, why are you hitting so hard on the death and the burial and all this stuff? It says for the love of Christ compels us. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 14, for the love of Christ compels us. That word compel means to. Push us forward with force. It's like taking a water balloon. I don't know if you ever do water balloons, but if you do a water balloon and you squish it like this and finally it just explodes out the front. That's what that word means. When you understand the love that he determined at Calvary, it will change your life. And that's what I'm talking about. He goes on to say, because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died. Do you know you died with him at Calvary when you became a believer? You were died with him and you were buried with him and raised again in spiritual baptism. And he died for all that those who should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. He said, quit living for yourself and start living for what Christ would have you live for. He has a different agenda than we have. 
the agenda of the kingdom is so much different. Are we concerned with the things of God? Or are we so wrapped up in our little world that we forget that people are dying and going to hell out there? One more scripture and then I'm going to quit here. For this, to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow in his steps. That's 1 Peter 2, 21 through 24. Who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but considered himself who judges righteously, who himself bore our sins in his own body on a tree, that we, having died to sin, and here's the phrase, might live for righteousness. Deal with sin. The church in America doesn't like that. It's called holiness. Are you holy? Are you living for him? Are you dealing with sin? If you don't deal with sin, you got no power. No power. You just go through the acts. Are you living for him? And when he convicts you of sin, what do you do? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And what? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Praise God for Calvary. That's where it all was made available. And then we can go on. And it says in Acts, and you shall receive what? Power. And they went out and they told people about Christ. You know what happened to a whole lot of them? They got killed. <laughs> they died. Because they spoke of Christ. And I think it's a time, and my call is, is uh, are you standing up for Jesus? We sang that last time. Uh, do you see more clearly what it took to obtain your salvation that's so free to us by grace? But it wasn't free. It wasn't easy. He paid it all. Who are we really living for? That's the question. <laughs>